I'm Bev. And I'm Kayla. And this is MHN. You know, it's been a while since we've been here. How was your break? It was great. I exercised a lot over break with all the free time. Speaking of exercise, Grafton and Felix will tell you all about the relations of mental health and exercise on this week's Mental Monday. I can't wait to see it. On this week's episode, you can expect to see a PSA about teachers, Mental Monday, boys biking, and Boston sports. Roll the clips! Hello MHN viewers, welcome back to Thursday PSAs. My name is JT and I'm here with Henry and I'm here to bring you a PSA on respecting teachers at school. Teachers make a lot of sacrifices to bring you an education and are deserving of great respect. Teachers wake up earlier than most other professions and dedicate their whole lives to educating the adults of tomorrow. They also show great adaptability when dealing with difficult situations in school. Over COVID, they were also forced to relearn how to do their job as schools were closed. Even if you're having a bad day at school, don't take it out on the people who are giving you a chance to better yourself and succeed in life. Remember that teachers are there for you. Yes, it's important always to remember this and know that teachers are on your side during the time you spend at school and will be trusted adults if given the chance. You may feel as though they cannot understand you, but your teachers were kids once too and should be able to understand what you're going through. Respecting your teachers gives you a better chance to do well in school and will make them more likely to give you second chances or give you advice when you find yourself needing it. There is no benefit from disrespecting your teachers. They are people just like everyone else and often show their students more respect than they are shown anywhere else. Whenever you think about disrespecting your teachers, remember the respect they show to you by coming into school today. Thank you to everyone for listening to this installment of Thursday PSAs. Now everyone make sure you respect your teachers. Welcome to this week's episode of Mental Mondays on a Thursday. This week we'll be taking a closer look on how your physical activity can affect your mental health. Physical activity has been proven to be one of the best ways of relaxing and enhancing your mental health. Since there's so much to talk about, today we'll be focusing on running and how it can affect your mental health. Sports can be the easiest way to get your running in, and we have tons of options here at the high school, such as soccer, basketball, football, and field hockey. All of these sports require a lot of running whether it's running up and down the field or up and down a court. According to Jumpstart, a website by WebMD, when you run, blood circulation in the brain is increased, and the part of your brain that responds to stress and improves your mood is affected. This causes a change that temporarily improves the reaction to stressful situations. What we can take away from this is that morning runs can definitely help you de-stress for the rest of your day. Even if you don't feel like you have time for a morning run, you can try to incorporate a run into any time of your day. Even at night, it could provide for a more worthwhile and relaxing sleep. Just make sure that if you're running in the dark, you wear the proper safety equipment. That way, oncoming traffic can see you and avoid unnecessary collisions. Even though running has tons of good things for you, there are some bad things that come with running that you should be aware of. According to Med India, an excess of running can provide in a feeling of sleeplessness or lack of motivation. So although it can decrease feelings of stress, it can also cause for a lack of motivation to do things. Running is one of the best and easiest ways to get physical activity simply because it is available to literally anyone in the world. You just have to go out and run. Trying to get out there as much as possible. You can literally run anywhere, whether that's on a field, on a track, or just around your neighborhood. Once again, if you guys have any questions or would like a personalized response, feel free to email Grafton and I, and we'll make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Mental Mondays on a Thursday. See you next Monday. Hey guys, and welcome back to Boys Biking. Today, I'm going to cover my list of the top five places I got to ride in 2022. All of these rankings are under the influence of how much fun I had at these places and the memories I have attached to them. Coming in at number five is my own backyard jump. I give it a top five spot because it's literally in my own backyard, so I can use it whenever I want. My friends and I built this together around two years ago, and we have spent countless hours hitting it over and over again. In fact, I pretty much hit it so much to the point where I hit it the exact same every single time. 
pretty small at about 10 feet, but it actually helped me improve a lot. Coming in at number four, Matson's backyard jump. Another backyard jump makes the list, but this time it's in one of my best friend's yards, Matson. This jump was a lot scarier than my backyard jump, and it took me a long time to build up the courage to hit it. But as it turns out, this jump is a lot more fun than the one in my own backyard. And I have a lot of good memories attached to this entire backyard that add to the specialty of this jump. And number three is Thunder Mountain Bike Park. Thunder Mountain is a great place. It's got both big jumps, the biggest in the country actually, and it also has super steep and chunky tech trails. And number two is Highland Mountain Bike Park. Although it's in New Hampshire, Highland is about as good as biking gets in this part of the country. I was fortunate enough to spend a whole week here in the summer and I got to meet a lot of new people as well as improve with them. Highland is practically a giant playground for anyone who's into biking and the memories I have along with the riding here itself gives it the number two spot on my list. Coming in at number one on my list of favorite riding spots in 2022 is the quarry. As showcased in the last video, the quarry no longer exists how it used to, but I'm giving it this ranking based off of what it was in its prime. The whole experience of the quarry during the time where all of my friends could go out there and build was by far the most fun I've ever had in all of my time biking. And that's why it gets its well-deserved spot at number one. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boys Biking, and I'll see you in the next episode. I'm Evan, and welcome back to Boston Sports News. The Patriots played the Miami Dolphins on Sunday. Not much happened in the first half, but Mac Jones did throw a touchdown to Tyquan Thornton to go up 7-0, then let up a touchdown in the second quarter to go into halftime tied 7-7. Miami would score another touchdown coming out of halftime to go up 14-7, then Nick Folk would make a 49-yard field goal to trail 14-10. Then Kyle Duggar would pick off Teddy Bridgewater and then take it back for his third pick six of the year to lead 16-14. Nick Folk would miss the extra point. In the fourth quarter, Mac Jones would throw a touchdown to Jacoby Myers to go up 23-14. Miami would score another touchdown, and that would be the end of the game. Patriots won 23-21. The Patriots improved to 8-8 eight and, eight and have a must-win game against the Buffalo Bills on Sunday at 1 p.m. The Celtics are 26-12 on the year. They beat the Milwaukee Bucks on Christmas Day 139-118, then the Houston Rockets 126-102, and the Los Angeles Clippers 116-110. They lost to the Denver Nuggets 123-111, then suffered their worst loss of the season to the Oklahoma City Thunder 150-117, who didn't have their best player, Shea Gildas Alexander. They look to get back in the win column as they play the Dallas Mavericks on Thursday at 7.30. The Bruins are 29-4-4 this year. They beat the New Jersey Devils 4-3, then lost to the Ottawa Senators in a shootout 3-2, then they beat the Devils again 3-1, then lost to the Buffalo Sabres 4-3 in an overtime. They beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Winter Classic 2-1. The Bruins play the Los Angeles Kings on Thursday at 10.30. That will do it for this week's episode of Boston Sports News. Make sure to tune in next time, and now back to the studio. Thank you for watching this week's episode of MHN. It's good to be back. Yes, it is. Have, Have a, a great, great week, Tigers! Week, Tigers.